All right, we're over on the port side of our little 12 and a half now, and I'd just like to point out some things about this forefoot that we've point, uh, put in here again. The long overlap here of the stem on top of the forefoot is really an advantage to us because we're trying to keep that glued together, and the amount of surface helps it so that when you tighten the head stay up, it's under a shear. It's trying to shear that glue line like this. The longer it is, the better off we are. We've got the same long, long overlap on top of the keel here, and that's really going to help us a lot. All right, we're up in the eyes of our 12 and a half here. That's right up forward, and you can see that I've replaced the very, very forward frames, the one on the starboard side and the one on the port side. Now, those two frames are actually pattern cut. There was a pattern made of them, the curvature of them, and then the bevels were lifted, and they're cut to bevel and placed in place. We've got to look at all the floor timbers and frames from here forward, and we've decided to replace six more floor timbers and about five frames. All right, so this is the first floor timber that we've cut and fit into position of the six floor timbers up in the eyes of the boat here. Now, it fits against what you call the dead rise of the boat here, the angle of the planking coming uphill here, and it also fits against the drag of the keel, which is the slope of the keel. And uh, it was patterned off of the original floor timber, which I have right here. This is the original floor timber that was in position there. I've used it as a nice flat plane because the after side of it was nice and flat, not twisted, and I've applied blue tape to the after side of it and uh, that blue tape has hung out past the floor timber a little bit because the floor timber didn't exactly fit, but this represents the shape of the boat properly, and that is what we used in order to transfer that shape onto the floor timber to cut out the floor timber like that. And I'm going to show you how that's done. I did number five already, now we're going to do number four. It slides back and forth in position. It doesn't fit very well because the shape of the boat's been altered a little bit when they framed it. So that's one of the reasons why it doesn't fit. And uh, we'd like our new floor timber to be a little bit higher than this because we have cut the bottom of this floor timber off to accept the forefoot. So it's become a little bit lower than it used to be. And uh, we've traced it off onto a piece of cedar that doesn't fit perfectly either, but it does fit into position just like that. And that is what we're gonna to use to support the tape. And the last thing I have to do is actually take a piece of 120 sandpaper and sand the aft side of it like this so that the tape won't stick to it too fiercely because otherwise when I'm trying to remove the tape from that, it'll stretch. So what I'm actually gonna do is spoil the adhesion a little bit by sanding that piece of wood. So now I'm applying some very small pieces of tape to the after side of this piece of cedar. And that is representing the shape of the boat exactly right there. I just curl them a little bit and then I can extend them out past the floor timber until they contact the planking. And then I just thumb them down into position and that pretty much shows you the proper shape. Just like that, pretty simple. That's the starboard side complete. I'm gonna put one uh, piece at the very bottom. This is the top of the keel, represents the top of the keel right there. That's all I need, just like that. All right, now I'm gonna take a longer piece for the port side because that plank is actually missing and just span right across there like that. Now you can see that that extends out past that piece of cedar a little bit, but at the very top, that's touching the planking. So that is the shape of the after side of that piece of cedar right there, complete. I'm just inspecting it, and that is pretty much it. Now what we're gonna do is take a little bevel set and take that bevel between the planking and the after side of that pattern, and then transfer it on to a little protractor and read the number, that is 10, 15, 18 degrees. So I'm gonna mark that right here, 18 degrees, right there. And then I'm simply gonna move down to the middle and press that right in there nice and tight. That is the right angle right there on my bevel set. I'm gonna put that on the protractor at 16 and a half. 
All right, now I've removed the clamp and the pin that holds it in place. I'm just going to reach in and pull it loose, pass it out through here, and show it to you. Now, you can see these are the degrees that I marked on there, 15, 16 and a half, 18. So it's got a three degree progression on this side. It'll have the same thing on the other side. I can saw this at 15 degrees, 16 degrees, 17 degrees, and 18 degrees. The angle between the floor timber and the top of the keel is 14 degrees. Now you can see on this side, this is 12 at the bottom where this one is 15. That's because the floor timber is not perfectly 90 degrees to the center line of the boat. It's in there a little crooked and I'm going to have to put it in there that way because of the fact that that's the position the framing's in. And I don't want to move the frame and start drilling more holes and correcting all of that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind all of this tape that you see on this pattern together with some more pieces because I want to lift it off there all in one piece. I don't want one side coming up without the other. I'm going to use the very top of it here as the very top of the floor timber. So I'm going to line this piece of tape up with the top of that like so. Just apply that on there. I'm going to shorten these sides so they don't hang out. All right, now we've stiffened it up with some more tape. We're going to add one more piece to continue stiffening it up here. And uh, now that that's been completed, I'm going to rewrite my bevels the way I had them. This is 16, no, it's 15, 16, 17, 18, this is 14. This started out at 12, and this would be 15, 14, and 13. And now we're going to remove it from that temporary piece of wood and put it onto the piece that we're going to saw out. Now you just don't want to have this thing too stuck to that piece of wood because it's going to stretch the tape and make an awful mess. Now you see it pretty much came off of there all in one shot deal and that's exactly what you want right there. A little trouble with it there, that's fine. Okay, now we're going to take our pattern and lay it down on the piece of wood that we're going to use for the floor timber. I'm going to line the top of that tape up with it just like that and stick it down into position just like that. Rather than using a pencil or anything to transfer that, I'm using a marker, a black magic marker, and I'm just going down the sides of the tape. I'm actually up on top of the tape there. You see the marker doesn't draw under the tape, it just draws alongside of it very nice and conveniently. We're missing a little piece of tape along the bottom there, but we know it's a straight line right straight across there when we cut it. so. It's not going to be a problem for us, and we're just transferring that. And we're going to keep our saw blade in the black. So there it is. It's been transferred onto the material just like that. And now I am going to write the bevels down right over here. This is 15, 14, 13, 12. That's 14. This is 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now I can remove the tape and take it over to the bandsaw and saw it out. There is our transferred shape. All right, I've sawn off the excess material from this piece because I wouldn't want the weight of it hanging out to the right-hand side of my bandsaw as I'm trying to make this intricate cut. It would make it a little unwieldy and uh, just wouldn't be very uh, easy to do. So I've shortened it up. I'm just about to make this progressive bevel cut right down through here to the numbers. Now I'd like to introduce you to my little bandsaw here. It's just a standard little bandsaw and uh, I've got the table loosened up and I've got a stick on the table here it's jutting out to the left side and it's passing this piece of plywood over here and I've got the bevels written down on that piece of plywood over here. So as I saw it out with one hand to the numbers, I'm going to be changing the bevel as I saw with my other hand. So it's going to be done all by myself very often it's done with two people, but it's a shortcut. I'm able to do it by myself. And now we're going to progress from 15 degrees down to 12. So we start out at 15, we're sawing along the line. 15, 15, 14 and a half, 14. As I saw along the line myself, I'm tending the bevel and the cut at the same time. So I just keep switching my eyes back and forth and go very slowly and be very careful about it. 13 down to 12. And now the port side of the floor timber is sawn out. We're just going to flip it around. And now we're making our first cut on the starboard side of the floor timber. And it's going to start out at 15 degrees. And we're going to saw along the line. 
and I'm going to keep looking back and forth at the degree readout, 17 degrees, 17 and a half, and finish up at 18. That completes the starboard side. And then we set the bandsaw at 14 degrees and cut the bottom of the floor timber where it lays down against the drag of the keel. And that is the floor timber complete right there. Sawn out to bevel on both sides, match the bevel at the bottom, starboard side, port side, completely done, ready to put in place. We don't anticipate having to touch it up whatsoever as far as it fits or anything. And here we go. We're going to drop it right into position and see how it goes. And there you go, just like that. Now I'm looking in there from the after side and I see that it fits on the starboard side perfectly against the planking. The bevels are correct. The bevels on the port side are correct. So that's it, we don't have anything left to do to it but bolt it into position.